Hello, and welcome to part one of my Electrical Age tutorial series. Today we're going to talk about cables, the basic building block of this mod. Before we get started, there are a few things you should know when dealing with electricity. The first is that the voltage drop across any two points in a wire is equal to the current flowing through the wire times the resistance of the wire. Note that this is not equal to the value found in the tooltips of this mod, rather it equals the tooltip value times the length of the wire. The second is that the power loss transmitting electricity between two points is equal to the current flowing through the wire times the voltage drop across the wire. This means that the less resistance the wire has, the better it is at transmitting power. Let's go look at an example. Here we have a 10 watt light hooked up to a 50 volt voltage source through a 45 block long cable. We can easily find the resistance of the cable by multiplying the value found in the tooltip by 45 and since we know the light bulb is 10 watts, we can calculate the current at 0.2 amps. Yet using our meter, it clearly shows this is wrong. Why? This is due to the fact the resistance in the cable is causing the voltage to drop before it hits the light. The light normally uses 10 watts, but only at 50 volts. Since the voltage is less, the light uses less power. Using one of our equations, we can calculate what the value of the voltage source needs to be in order to have the light get 50 volts. We know that ideally the light takes 10 watts and the wire will have a current of 0.2 amps. Plugging this in tells us the source must be 50.225 volts, not 50, in order to give the light the full 50 volts. Using our meter shows that this equation is indeed correct. So how is this information useful? If we run 50 lights with this setup, they will pull 500 watts, cause the wire to have a current of 10 amps, and the voltage at the source will need to be 61.25 volts. If we want 100 lights with this setup, the power consumed equals 1000 watts, the current in the wire will be 20 amps, and that if the required voltage is 72.5 volts, there's going to be some explosions of wire. This is because we've exceeded the voltage limit on the cable. Solutions to this include having a shorter cable, so there's less resistance, or you can try running them at a lower voltage. Over here, we have two lights running at lower voltages. The one on the left is running fine at 40 volts, but the one at the right struggles to run at 35 volts. Keep in mind that both of these are economy light bulbs, and regular incandescent light bulbs have much higher minimum voltage requirements. Now, knowing we can run our lights at 40 volts, we revise our equation and still end up with exploding wires. Even with the lower voltage and lower power transmission, we still have too high a voltage at the source. The main factor here is the resistance of the wire. For each block of cable we place, there's a voltage penalty incurred for moving the electricity. The solution to transmitting large amounts of power is to use higher voltages. This circuit transmits the power at 200 volts, and then the transformer steps it down to the 50 volts required for the light bulb. Notice the increase of voltage at the source is again 0.2525 volts, but since this is a medium voltage circuit, this increase has less of an effect. If you increase the voltage, you decrease the current, which is good as each cable has a specific current limit. In fact, if you plug the values of the cable into this equation, both sides come out equal to each other. Not something you need to know, but still interesting anyways. These signs over here work out the source voltages for transmitting 1000 watts of power. As you can see, the higher the voltage the power gets transmitted under, the less voltage you lose to cable resistance. A very high voltage cable only loses about 2 volts, which is practically nothing. Above is a cheat sheet you can use when creating networks. If you want the voltage equal to the nominal voltage of a cable out of one point, say you have a 200 volt cable equal to 200 volts at the end of the line, these equations tell you how much of a voltage penalty you're going to get. It's handy to know if you're planning on working with long cable setups or high power networks. The only other thing we haven't talked about is changing voltages. Transformers are used to either step up or step down cable voltages by a specific ratio. They work by increasing or decreasing the voltage by the ratio of cables in the internal slot. A ratio of 4 to 1 will either increase or decrease the voltage by a quarter, depending on which way the electricity is running. This allows you to go from lower voltages to higher voltages, and vice versa. The one thing you have to remember is that you can't exceed the cable voltage limits. If you put a 200 volt cable on the side of a transformer getting 800 volts, you're going to get an explosion for your carelessness. Also remember to be careful when setting up transformers. A transformer doesn't step voltages down until all cables are in their slots. 
This can result in explosions if you connect the transformer to a lower voltage cable as a transformer passes the voltage through without stepping it down even before even cables are placed. <laughs> Lastly, be careful not to put too many cables in the lower slot. This causes the voltage to not get stepped down correctly and results in yet another explosion due to the voltage cables being overloaded on the low side. Despite all the potential for explosions, I find that most of my circuits blow up due to overloading the wires, not the transformers. It just happens that the largest amount of power and voltage on a line occurs right after transformers themselves. So if you think your transformers are blowing up, try checking your cables first to make sure those aren't overloading. Well, that's it for this tutorial. If you like what you see, let me know in the comment section. If you have any other questions, stop on by the forum page. Good luck, and remember, you haven't learned anything until you've blown up at least one circuit.